Hey, welcome back to Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag. I'm your host, Clint Schaffer, and today we're going to be talking with Krista Russell from the Climate Field Views Customer Experience Team, and we're going to be talking about all things planting 2022. Stay tuned. Krista, thanks for joining the podcast here on Around the Farm. Uh, How about you introduce yourself for all the listeners out there? Yeah, thanks for having me, Clint. My name's Krista Russell. I am a customer experience advisor with the Climate Field View team. So what I do in this role is really focus on making the best grower experience possible. So sometimes that's support, sometimes that's working on projects within our teams as a whole, but just really wanna make sure that all of our growers out there are having a great experience with Field View. Nice, that, uh, that, that's, I, I would assume that's very welcomed from our farmers. <laughs> It, it tends to be, that's for sure. <laughs> now, our, what, we're uh, location-based. Uh, where, where are you at uh, in the world here? Yeah, so I am based in St. Louis, Missouri, um, really close to our climate headquarters. I actually grew up in rural Illinois, just about an hour from St. Louis, so really rural background. My parents didn't farm, but I got involved in ag through being involved with the FFA, and the rest is history. So really love what I do, really passionate about it. Like it's, it's the center of my life to say the least. Ah, that is that is great to hear. I mean, I think uh, I would I would uh, echo a lot of that as well. So I've been uh, I was a, a FFA and you know and uh, we we farmed as well. And uh, I always love talking to folks that are passionate about ag. So it's uh, great to hear. So so uh, so how about uh, in this role as a as a customer experience advisor, Krista? What, what's that really What's that really mean? I mean, what uh, what are some of your you know some some of your daily I guess routine here? Yeah, so a little bit what I do is a lot of various things, but specifically I do support a territory. So I cover all of the South and East Coast. So those are those are kind of my main growers. Um, what I do during that time is really just work a lot with our field team. So we have our climate activation specialists who are kind of our boots on ground. They're the ones who go out and will visit different operations. I do a lot of work with them, training with them. If they're working with a specific local grower, maybe running into some issues, maybe needing some help with things, I'll come in with them, we'll have some communication and do really everything we can to help that grower out. Um, You will also find me on the support lines during peak season. So if they call our climate support numbers, I'm there to help, anything to do with troubleshooting on that realm and really just anything to help with it. Lots of training, if anyone has any questions, uh, growers wanna learn something new. Um, Maybe it's some data in their account that needs cleaned up, stuff like that. Really, really just the overall success, any questions about what's going on with the product. And then, of course, really supporting that territory of mine. So, Chris, as you're working with 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 some of the farmers, you know, you said in the south and east coast, uh, what are some of the tools that you use to, to help, you know, troubleshoot while they're, you know, out in the field trying to get their get their crop in? Yeah. So some of the tools that we use on the support lines is really it comes with a lot of questions. You know, when you get into a troubleshooting call, it's a little bit like playing 20 questions. If you ever played that as a kid, but it's always asking, hey, what's going on? What does your drive look like? Um, We're really trained on the support team to know what to look for, what to ask questions on. And then for us, we do have a lot of tools. So we have a strong knowledge center where we share knowledge with each other. We can share tools and videos out to our growers. I'm really kind of the coolest thing about our support team, what I think is, you know, we all have a lot of different backgrounds. You know, we're experts on different things and we all work together. So my team and customer experience, we work a lot with specific territories, but we have product generalists who are covering the phones full time, our level two technical product support team. Um, So if we do run into questions that maybe we don't necessarily have the answer to immediately, there's always somebody to reach out to, to get that taken care of and take care of the issue for that grower. So lots of tools like that, especially I rely heavily on my folks in the field. Um, We have a pretty good working relationship. So we'll call each other, help work through different issues and really just anything to support that grower. Now, you know, you, you talk about, you know, doing some of the troubleshooting and, and using some of these tools. I would assume that sometimes the issues are with the actual technology that's out there outside of field view, like maybe an iPad issue or things of that nature. How do you start digging into some of those issues? 
Yeah, so there are issues with that beyond the iPad and such like that. We just, we kind of have a base of know what to look for. If it is outside of field view, you know, we're the we're the type of people that we are going to try to fix and help things in any way we can. I guess kind of a good example of that one was, it was actually this past harvest season, I was on the phones and I was talking to a grower and he said, hey, my drive is connected to the iPad, but for some reason it's not showing up. And it was a lot of questions of trying to figure out, okay, it looks like it's connected, but it wasn't connected. It turns out that in the grain cart next to him, his son had an iPad and the drive was actually in the combine was connecting to the grain cart. So, you know, (laughs) it wasn't necessarily a support issue on our end or anything going wrong with field view. But after kind of asking all those questions, it was like, oh, my gosh, that was it. It was kind of a realization. So, you know. A lot of calls like that, just, you know, talking through things and just trying to get an overall picture of what's going on. You know, if you ever talk to me on the support lines, I'm probably going to be asking you a ton of questions, but that's that's why. It's just to figure out what's going on there. And we've seen it all. Each support call is different. And every time you take one, you learn a little bit more. And as time goes by, you know, you're just we're just ready and equipped to deal with those. You know, it's, it's interesting you, you mentioned that, you know, with multiple iPads and just how far we've came in, in agriculture with technology. And, and it's like, you know, here we are, tractors are driving themselves. You have multiple iPads that are floating around the farm, multiple monitors. It's just absolutely fascinating just where we're, where we're at and where we're going to go. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I guess kind of the thing that I love about it too is a lot of people say, oh, hey, ag technology, I need to be an expert. But that's definitely not the case. You know, you don't have to be tech savvy to use FieldView. And that's what our support team's here for. You know, we're here to help with any of those questions. We can send somebody out if you want us to walk you through how to use the whole system, set up compatibility, and just we're here for that. It's very user friendly and you have a lot of free support. We're really passionate about what we do. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, you know, it's it's one of those I can picture myself out in, uh, you know, in the in the tractor, you know, helping dad on the farm. Uh, I typically, you know, I'm fairly stubborn, and I don't want to, I don't want to have to make that 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 call, right? So, what are some of the best practices that you could share with our listeners to maybe get them set up in the best right direction as they go into planting season? Yeah. So my. First and foremost, a big best practice is make sure that that CAB app is up to date. So we release updates periodically. Um, Right now, the most recent recent version is CAB app 11.0.1. But each time those updates come up, those really can help set you up for success. So that's a big thing to check. Another thing is make sure all your equipment's compatible. Maybe it's a new setup. Um, That's something we can help with on the support lines. If you want to call in, we can walk growers through that. Of course, all the info is on our website as well. Uh, another big thing is just making sure that, you know, you don't have any loose connections. Things are tied in together and uh, it's all taken care of. An- another big one that we see a lot of support issues kind of coming up around is equipment setup. Is within the cab app, if you go in and you enter your equipment, you really want to be precise on those measurements and how you have it set up. Because maybe if you enter a measurement wrong, your GPS is set off to the side, that can lead to some bad maps. So really a good proactive thing is just to dive in there, make sure that equipment's set up good. And, you know, it's always a good thing to get connected before we hit that peak season. So really, especially now, get into the account, make sure everything's good to go. You know, pull the equipment out, make sure we're connected, make sure everything's going well. And if you run into any issues, have any questions, of course, give us a call on support. So you talk about like the importance of those measurements. Um, how how can somebody be looking at the map or maybe what are some of the things they can be doing to, to maybe try catching some of that before they get halfway through planting season? Yeah, so a really good rule of practice, regardless of checking measurements or just in general, is at the end of the day, you get done with a field, take a look at the map, make sure everything looks okay, make sure maybe passes aren't over overlapping, you know, you will have, if you look for those gaps, those turnaround points, that's a good place to go. Beforehand, you know, get in, check that equipment set up. Um, it is very user-friendly. It'll show you exactly where you need to measure to get that all taken care of. But we also, on the GPS side, we have a feature where we can kind of adjust where the GPS is while we are live mapping. So maybe if a pass needs to scoot over or something like that, that's something that we can 
we can go in and look at. And honestly, if something does happen, if it is maybe a little bit of overlapped passes, maybe you recorded some data in a field outside of the boundary, we have a really awesome data cleanup team that that's their sole purpose is to help fix data. So, you know, maybe you have two fields together and we need to split them in half. There's a lot of stuff with fixing that after the fact that we can do. So again, you know, there's ways to proactively fix it, but if something does happen, we're, we're here to help too. Yeah, on Chaffer Farms, we have never recorded uh, data in the wrong field. I mean, that's just that's just never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I am a hundred percent lying on that. We have we have definitely had those pieces, and I have uh, had uh, had our data cleaned up before. So it's a great process. And again, uh, hats off to your uh, your team there. I mean, I think y'all do just a, a fantastic job at uh, supporting all the farmers out there. Thanks. Yeah, it's it, we we really pride ourselves on trying to get that resolved quickly. You know, I think that's something we're always measuring ourselves too. You know, we track on our end how quick it takes us to resolve a case, how long our wait times are on the support lines, and we're always wanting to do better. So we know it's a busy season and don't want our growers held up any longer than they need to be. Yeah, absolutely. On uh, you talked about the cab app update. What was that? Uh, what was that number that uh, that's that's that uh, that we're on now? Yeah, so we are now on cab app 11.0.1. That is our new release. Um, something big that we are seeing with cab app 11 this year is we did create a public beta for some new ag leader compatibility. So if you are using an ag leader system and weren't compatible compatible in the past, you know, jump in, you know, give us a call. You may be compatible now. It's always a good day when we can expand that compatibility to more growers and get more people on field view. It's always exciting to to see that compatibility list uh, continue to uh, to expand. Uh, we've had uh, Tanner Dunn on this uh, on this uh, uh, podcast before, and I know just uh, I think like two weeks ago he was out running one of Dad's tractors, uh, trying to expand that compatibility. Right, and it's just uh, incredible all the testing that uh, that gets done in that to continue to build that uh, build that list out. Um, when uh, you know back on that the the update as well, I know one of the hesitations that uh, the the farmers have uh, said in the past is, you know, should I update my operating system of my iPad, and how do I know when to do that? Is there any advice on on you know when we should update our actual iPads versus versus the actual cab app? Yeah, so. For the iPad updates, especially here for planting season, um, we are recommending that they are completely up to date on the most recent version of iOS. Um, the only time that maybe we would have a little bit of hesitancy about that is when it's harvest season and we have an iOS update come out in the middle of the season. So, you know, update now before you get going, but if you are kind of in the middle of the season and you're currently mapping, you know, and things are running smooth, I would wait till after that season's over to update just because that's something that we have to do to test to make sure we're ready to go with those new iOS updates. But for this spring, we're good to go with the most recent version. All right, so if I'm hearing you right, I need to update my iPad, update the cab app, check all my measurements, and make sure my equipment is all compatible. And I should be smooth sailing after that, right? Yep, definitely. <laughs> a few other things that you can check into too, make sure that iPad has plenty of storage and Make sure your field boundaries are clean. Make sure those are nice and neat in the in the account. And then, uh, you know, if you want to go ahead and start entering hybrids, getting prescriptions in there, just all that good pre-planning to get ready for when you hit the field, it should be a seamless experience. So in case I have to call into support, what's the, what's the best number for me to call? Or is there also maybe an email support that I can also uh, send a message to? Yeah, so there are three good ways to contact support. Our phone number is 888-924-7475. So if you call that in, you'll get a live agent. You might just talk to me and we'll help you through several issues. Another way to reach out to us is send us an email at support at climate.com. Um, that will automatically create a support case for you and we'll have someone reaching out to you soon. And we also have a live chat feature on our website. So if you go to climate.com and see the little live chat button, that's still our same team, the same folks you're gonna speak to on the phones, they're covering that as well. So whatever's most convenient for you in the time being, that is, uh, that's the best way to reach out to us. 
I love the live chat option. I've found just in in my everyday life, if I need support, it seems like that live chat is just such an easy way. I can multitask really easy. I can be focusing on one thing yet, you know, drop a message. And uh, I think that option is just great if you have the time to, you know, or have the access to it. Yeah, definitely. It's it's quick. It's easy. It's a really good thing to do just for some quick questions and get you back on the right track. Maybe it's just a question about how a specific feature works. So definitely, definitely, we try to keep it convenient for our growers. Well, one last thing that I'd like to ask. I mean, you said you were covering the South and East Coast, and here we are in uh, in March. I mean, are are the planters rolling uh, in your territory then? Definitely. So I have the eastern part of Texas, the southern Texas, the planners are definitely rolling. Um, that south delta, north delta region will be rolling here really, really shortly. So I love that I have such a wide territory because I also cover uh, New York and Pennsylvania. So I oh, have wow. guys up there that have a have a little ways to go before we hit planning, but there's always something going on. It's busy, lots of phone calls coming in, but that's, that's good. More calls, the more people I can help. Well, I would assume with going from Texas to New York, your planting season is probably longer than anybody else in, uh, on your team then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is definitely true. You know, I had, had a grower up in New York who was wrapping up harvest right around Christmas. And, you know, we were starting planting in February in South Texas. So there's always something going on, that's for sure. All right. Well, one last uh, one last thing on your territory here. What's your absolute favorite part about uh, about this time of year? Yeah, my favorite part about this time of year is really just there's so much going on. I'm the type of person who likes to be busy, that likes having a lot going on. You know, I get to talk to my growers a lot more. You know, when we're in December, January, that time of year, you're not really reaching out a whole lot. So really, just having those good conversations and getting to meet so many different people and help them be set up for success for the entire year. That's that's probably what I like best about planting season. That, you, you also went to uh, Carbondale as well, right? I did. I am a proud SIU alum. Um, go Salukis. <laughs> there you go. I, I, I would assume uh, ag degree then? Yep, I uh, majored in agricultural systems and education, and I actually was going to be an ag teacher. So I actually student oh, taught nice. in several small communities down in Southern Illinois. I absolutely loved it, kind of ended up with a career change, but really just teaching others was something I was passionate about. And, you know, it, it was really cool. So it's really translated well into my current role to just being able to communicate and kind of explain things to people. I, uh, I once had a call with a grower on the support lines and we were talking and he was like, hey, what's your background? What have you done before? And I told him and he was like, oh, well, you're still teaching. You're just teaching all of us farmers on the support lines every day. And he's like, and I'll be honest, you're, you're doing a good job at it. So that was kind of a, a cool full circle moment that I'm still using that background a lot. But yeah, it, it, it was awesome. That is absolutely wonderful, and and you're right. That's uh, that's just uh, another form of teaching, and uh, I would uh, I would assume that uh, that your growers are very thankful that uh, that you're there to help them through that. So definitely, I try to do everything I can to help them that I possibly can. You know, I I get it and want to make sure that they're well supported. Well, that is great. Well, Krista, I would just want to say thank you again for uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm sure uh, uh, there's there, there's farmers that are wanting to talk to you here. So uh, so thank you for taking time out of your out of your day here to uh, to jump on the podcast here and have a quick conversation with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. We'll uh, we'll we'll maybe have to bring you back on in uh, in harvest time. See how that's uh, how that's all setting up. Give these updates again. Yeah, that would be great. I would would be happy to provide them. I'd like to just say thanks again to Krista for stopping by and joining us here on Around the Farm. Also, I'd like to thank you, the listeners. And if you like this podcast, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified each and every time we push out new content. And Around the Farm is brought to you by Climate Field View. Until next time, we'll see you around the farm. <laughs>